Hey folks, I'm Saeed, the Coder Grammar, and in this video, we're going to go through a method called stream.of, or well, the method is called of. It's a little bit weird and a little bit mysterious, especially how it is similar or different to the arrays.stream method. So we're going to start simple, and then we're going to progress into some of those differences and quirks as we progress. All right, so let's get into it. Now we've got a straightforward Java project with this class here that we're going to use to demo the code. So I'll just collapse that there. And I've got the same class stream of .java, open twice in this bottom view here. You can just see the main method, which I'm going to use to execute certain methods and having it open twice means that in this window here, I can just change the method that I'm calling in this main method here. All right. So the stream .of method is used for converting elements or arrays to a stream. But remember in Java methods can be overloaded. So there could be more than one stream of method. And we'll look at that. And we're going to look at how it compares to arrays.stream, which is another method that does something very similar. All right. So first things first, if we want to create a stream and we're going to go through what streams are, that's probably the subject of another video, but it's something that was introduced in Java 8, which makes it very easy to work on pipelines of elements. Anyway, so we can say stream dot of and we can give it a string. A blank string is just for demonstration purposes, but fundamentally that is a stream of one element and you get a stream of string back. Okay, so all straightforward and simple. Now we might want to call a stream dot of with multiple elements. Okay, so we've done that in this case, we've got two elements and then we again, we get a stream of strings. They're both strings. But how does that work? How can we have a method where we pass in one argument? And in this case, we pass two arguments. Well, let's have a look. So if we click on this control click or command click, you can see that there's an of method with one element. OK, so that explains the first one. And if we click on this one here, this is actually an overloaded method. But in this case, you've got something called var args and var args are where you can pass in multiple parameters of the same type. That's what these three dots denote. OK, so in this case, you could pass in an arbitrary number of elements. They have to be of the same type. So type is genericized type T. And that's in our example, a string. So let's just go back to here. All right. So that explains one element and that explains two elements. All right. How about if we want to create a stream of null? Well, we've got this method here, the main method, which will test that. So let's just run that and see what happens. I'll just make that window a bit bigger. OK, so you can see that you get a null pointer exception. So it doesn't like null. So stream dot of null doesn't like null elements. OK, so how do we work around that? Well, we can comment that out and use of nullable instead. Now of nullable can still have a non null value, but of nullable means that you can pass it in a null value if the value that you're going to pass in here could potentially be null. OK, so let's just run that and see what happens. OK, no errors. We didn't print anything out because we don't have any console output here, but this it's executed without any errors because null is absolutely fine as long as you use the of nullable method. So, so far you've seen two versions of the method and now you've seen a third. So you've got of with one element and you've got of with var args and now you've got stream dot of nullable with potentially null element. All right, so let's move on now. Let's have a look at what to do if we've got an array of elements and how we can compare that. So Given that stream dot of can take var args, you've seen this type here. Well, this is compatible with an array. OK, so var args is equivalent to an array. An array is a collection of multiple elements, a simple collection of multiple elements. So here, not a collection with a capital C as in Java collections, but just something that contains multiple elements. OK, so in this case, you've got a string array with two elements inside it. And this string array can simply be passed to the stream of method. Now it will go to the var args version, which is compatible with arrays. And then you get a stream of strings. That's all good. Now we've also got the arrays.stream method, OK, which does a very similar thing and also returns a stream of string. So what's the difference here? Well, to be honest, there isn't really a huge amount of difference for non primitive types. It's pretty much equivalent. So if we have a look at the stream of method, if you look, ultimately, it just calls arrays.stream. So it's pretty much exactly equivalent. And this is the case for non primitive types. So this is not a primitive array. It's not an int array, for example, it's a object type, it's a class type string. And for that, it is equivalent. All right. So hopefully that makes sense. So you can use either stream of or arrays.stream. And that's all good. All right. So let's try using some primitives. So let me just make this method invocable from here. So first of all, we've got an int array with two elements in it, one and two, and we call stream dot of for that int array, similar to what we did for the string array. But we get something a bit strange. We don't get a stream of ints. Oops, get that out of the way. We don't get a stream of ints. We get a stream of int array. 
Okay, so if I just comment this out for a second, and uh, let's run this and see what happens. All right, so you get this funky looking object reference, okay, which doesn't really tell us what we want. It didn't print out one and two. So what's actually happened is this stream doesn't contain multiple elements, it contains one element, and that one element happens to be an array. If we try to print it out, we don't get one comma two or any number of elements that were in the array, we just get one thing printed out, which is the object reference of this or the object identifier of this int array. Okay, that's not really what we want. So let's compare that to using arrays.stream. Now remember arrays.stream and stream.of looked very similar when we were using object types. Now we've switched to using int array, a primitive array. Let's see what the difference is. So let's run that now. All right, so this time it works as we would want it to. We print out one and two, which are the elements in this array. So what's going on here? If it's the same, we saw that these methods are basically the same, stream.of called arrays.stream. Why is it behaving differently? Well, let's just take a look. All right, so let's click on the stream.of method in this case. Now in this case, if you notice, it's not calling arrays.stream, it's doing something else. Now we won't go into the detail of what it's doing, but ultimately the result is not really something that you want. Now when you end up with a stream of int array, actually let's go on to the next method and we can describe it better there. So the stream.of version is a stream of one element, an array, so we need to what they call flatten it. So imagine you have a scenario where you've got say an outer collection, Let's call that say A. And in there you've got elements and each element, I don't know how best to draw this, but each element is say, got one, two, three. And then you've got another set of elements, two, three, four. Okay, let's put some commas in there. Now this, this outer one, if I just put some spaces in there, now A can be said to have two elements inside it, but each element is an array. Okay, that's element one and that's element two. Now, if you wanna end up where you have something that looks like this. So you'll have one, two, three, two again, two again, three and four. Now, if you look at this, these are all the elements that were in these two elements, but flattened out. This is what you call flat mapping or flattening, okay? So we take this structure, which is a, an array or some sort of collection with each element actually being another array. And then we wanna flatten it so that you would just get the outer array with the individual items, okay? Just a series of items. And this concept is called flattening or flat mapping. So that's basically what we end up having to do when we, do, when we use primitive arrays with the stream.of method. Now we can do that with this funky looking code here. We say E, which is the stream of int arrays, and we say flat map to int, and we use the arrays.stream because arrays.stream allows you to convert this individual items or each individual item in here, which is an int array, allows you to convert it to a stream and then the flat map to int converts that to an int stream. It combines all those streams. So we end up with one int stream. Okay, so let's see if that does what we want. Okay, that does exactly what we want. So we can still use stream.of, but it requires this extra step to flatten the elements of the stream. All right, so let's move on. Now, what do we do if we have other primitive types? Okay, so we've seen that arrays.stream works quite nicely. So if you look in this previous example that we did here, this example gave us the unflattened int stream or int array stream, but the arrays.stream did exactly what we wanted with a primitive array by giving us an int stream. But what happens if we wanna do say Booleans, for example, with this example here? So here we've got a Boolean array with two elements in it, true and false. It can have more elements. It could you know, repeat true and false again and again. And we wanna create a stream of Booleans from that. So let's do that. Okay, and straight away you can see there there's an error. We don't even need to run the code. It just says I can't resolve the method stream boolean. So if we click on here, you can see that there's a typed method for classes. So string, for example, that we used earlier. Then we've got int, long, double, but we don't have every single type. So we don't have one for boolean and we don't have one for char, etc., etc. So what can we do? Well, before we move on to that, let's just have a look at another example. So say we've got a char array and we want to use the arrays.stream method. Again, if we uncomment that code, you can see that it's complaining again for the same reason. Okay, so let's comment that out again. All right, in order so that we can test this code, let's just put that method there. All right, so now coming onto here, what we could do, it's actually hard to see that code because the line's too long. So what we could do is we could say stream.of b, and remember b is that Boolean array. We get this kind of undesirable unflat mapped 
stream, stream of Boolean array. So this is a stream with one element in it, which is a Boolean array. And then we can do this kind of funky code in order to flatten that array. Now it's pretty unsightly, this code. We pass a function to that allows us to flatten it. And then we map it to an object and we pull the element out of the index. And there's some kind of boxing and unboxing going on in here to actually create a Boolean wrapper type as opposed to the Boolean primitive type. But let's see if this actually works and does what we want. And let's run that. All right, you can see that it does exactly what we want. So with arrays.stream, we've got the compile error, but in this case, we can actually do exactly what we want. So you can see that there's certain cases where stream.of works really nicely and is actually the simplest way of dealing with it. For example, if you have a Boolean array, and there's other cases where arrays.stream does what you want with less effort. For example, if you've got primitives like in long and double. So hopefully you can see that there's subtle differences between these two methods and it's worth knowing about. All right, so let's summarize what we've learned in this video. Stream.of and arrays.stream are equivalent for object types. Things like strings, car, house, you know, whatever type of object that you've got. For primitive arrays, things like int, boolean, etc., stream.of creates a stream with one element, which is the actual entire array that you're putting in there. And that's not usually what you want. You then have to flatten it or flat map it. For primitive arrays, arrays.stream does what you would expect. It's kind of flattened already. It doesn't actually create an, a stream of one element, which is the array. It contains the individual elements. However, it only works for certain primitive types. So then you're back to stream.of with the flat mapping required. All right, so I hope learning about those subtle differences between stream.of and arrays.stream was useful for you. If it was, hit like, because like tells YouTube that this video is actually useful and they'll probably show it to more people. And if you want to be kept up to date with more information about Java, software, developer news, etc., etc., then don't forget to hit subscribe. Thank you for watching.